Hello and welcome to the Conquering History channel. Today I'll be covering episode 4 of Legend of the Galactic Heroes. We begin by panning in on the planet Odin where Reinhardt von Lohengram is receiving honors of distinguished service for his service at the Battle of the Estate Star Zone as we already saw at the end of Overture to a New War. He is now a full Imperial Admiral. Reinhardt and Kirchis are having a conversation before Reinhardt's audience with the Kaiser. Reinhardt tells Kirchis that he is also due for a promotion. He also rather ominously asks who shall sit on the throne as the Kaiser's power is on a foundation of sand. At the ceremony, Reinhardt is not only promoted, but given command of half the Empire's space fleet, a remarkable achievement considering he's only 20 years old. Once more, we see older members of the military scorning Reinhardt's titles and calling them byproducts of the Kaiser's favoritism towards Anna Rose, Reinhardt's sister. However, his growing string of victories are becoming impossible to ignore. After the ceremony, Kirchis is approached by a man we have seen a few times but who has never spoken, Captain Paul Oberstein. Oberstein's eyes flicker. They literally flicker. Oberstein apologizes for this, says that this is due to his mechanical eyes losing power. Oberstein says he is fortunate. In the times that they live in, they have the technology that allows him to be able to live comfortably, whereas under the first Kaiser, Rudolf, he would have likely been disposed of. Oberstein compliments Kirchis for having such a good commander and expresses that he wishes to work under such a brilliant one as well, before leaving because he needs to return to the Isirilon Fortress. Kirchis and Reinhardt return to Anna Rose's home, reflecting on how long it has been since Cue the Flashback! We go back 10 years in time, and Kirchis remembers first meeting Reinhardt and Anna Rose. They had moved in next door to his family. They were poor nobles, and the young Siegfried was quite taken with them both quickly, particularly Anna Rose. Through Kirchis's eyes, we see Reinhardt's rather strong personality was persistent from a young age. Reinhardt doesn't make any friends at school besides Kirchis, including taking a local bully on a trip to Dick Kick City. Time passes, and one day the boys return home to find a car waiting outside. Anna Rose is going to be taken to the Imperial Palace to serve the Emperor. Reinhardt runs inside to find his father, who's at the bottom of a bottle next to a large bag of money. Reinhardt accuses his father of selling Anna Rose, but his father says that he didn't have a choice in the matter. The Kaiser can get what he wants, and at least this way the family is going to get some money out of it. Reinhardt is heartbroken by his sister's leaving, and she says her goodbyes to the boys on her way out. That night, as Kerchus moons over Anna Rose, he sees Reinhardt running away from home. Following and confronting him, Reinhardt pulls out a blaster, declaring that he's going to get Anna Rose back. The boys sneak off to spy on a party of notables, and Reinhardt asks why they are always having such a good time, despite being in the middle of the war. The answer is that these people have no family members in the fleet and remain untouched by the war. Thinking that he sees his sister, Reinhardt runs into the party and creates a, co a commotion. Him and Kirchis manage to escape into the woods to safety. Now, Reinhardt expresses his goals. He wants power, because power is how he will get Anna Rose back, and with power, he will never be looked down on by higher numbers again. Reinhardt promptly decides to go and join the military academy, as being a soldier is the fastest way to power, and Kirchis will go with him. Thinking of Anna Rose, Kirchis agrees. On that note, the flashback ends and we are returned to the present day. Reinhardt reiterates that someday soon his sister will be returned to him, and more than that, the universe will be his. And that brings us to the end of the episode. So not a whole lot happened in the way of action in this episode, however it was an important one because we found out how Kerchus and Reinhardt met, as, as well as Anna Rose, and the start of Kerchus's fascination with her. And we learn more about Reinhardt's motivations, which we haven't really explored too much up to this point, although it's still early in the first season. And I think now is as good a time as any to address the elephant in the room regarding Kirchis's and Reinhardt's relationship. The big question on everyone's mind, are they gay? Well, the answer is... Maybe? It's, it's a left a little bit ambiguous. Kerchus, at least, certainly seems to be fairly obsessed with Anna Rose, 
so he's probably straight but Reinhardt uh, it's left a little bit ambiguous and there'll certainly be hints that seem to point that way throughout the series but it's ultimately up for you to decide uh, it's up to interpretation if you want I could do a video of my own explaining what I really think but I, I think it'll take up too much time so next time we're gonna be looking at Kerchus some more we'll still be on the Imperial side of things and so I will see you in episode be sure to subscribe so you can get notifications whenever I upload a new video. Have a great day.